We started at 10am on July 22nd. Ben had an initial design in mind that he sketched out onto some paper. I scaled out these designs into real world measurements and began cutting out the wood needed to create them. The largest problem I had to overcome was precisely cutting the holes so they weren't too large or too small, so I went slowly on the first cuts. The potentiometers were the first test to gauge how well the rest of the components would fit. Once I figured out how to properly mount them into the panel, the rest of the components pretty much fell into place. I pretty much flew through the rest of the cutting. I soldered all the components and test fit them into the panels to make sure that everything was square. I then painted the panels black and left the sides unpainted because we still needed to mount the panels together and sand the edges flush. There's an anti-static packing material known as Velostat. Velostat is a black conductive plastic. It has an interesting property where compressing the material causes it to lower in resistance as a function of the force applied. We exploited this to make a MIDI keyboard that can detect velocity. After mounting the components, I cleaned up the circuitry in the back by soldering all the grounds together and all the power lines together. I then attached the wiring to the Velostat keyboard that Ben had made earlier. I used a stranded wire and metal tape to attach the input line from each key to the breadboard. Meanwhile, Ben was mounting the panels together and constructing the base. I then wired everything together and tested to make sure that each button, potentiometer, Velostat key, and slider worked properly. Comment below if you're interested in an in-depth explanation of how I wired and programmed all these inputs together. The coding took longer than expected since we had to overcome many problems. We had 19 analog input devices and 7 digital input devices. With all these analog inputs, we had to set up a master slave system with two Arduinos. The master, or brains, of the system was the Arduino 101, and the slave was the Arduino Mega. The Mega has 16 analog input pins and 53 digital pins, so it acted as the input hub for most of the components. Anytime a device changed its state, the Mega would update with the value and create a corresponding MIDI message. The Arduino 101 continuously requests MIDI messages from the Mega and then propagates those messages to control Ableton. The Arduino 101 has a special Intel Curie chip as its main processor meaning it has double the CPU speed than the Mega. This worked perfectly because of, as the brains of the system, the Arduino 101 was able to operate quickly and efficiently to control Ableton via MIDI. MIDI messages are constructed of three simple bytes. They are used to control digital audio workstations. In this case, we are controlling Ableton Live with these MIDI messages. We also had indexable LED strips that changed according to the music. 